Hello everybody. In this video I will show you a genuine and real anti-gravity device. And yeah, this is basically a Halberg array and a parabolic shaped copper reflector. And if you move it like this, you will feel a repelling force and yeah, it's like an anti-gravity effect because if you move it like this, you can really feel a repelling force that, yeah, works against gravity. And I will also show you how to build such a device like this and give you a bit of an explanation and, yeah, of how far I understand how this works. And, yeah, let me start up with the basics. So, I have here a Halbach array. You probably know what this is. This is a circular Halbach array. These are um, basically eight five millimeter cube magnets arranged um, in a pattern like if my uh, if my fingertip was south pole or north pole doesn't matter. It's one is like this and then like this and like this and then like this and then the pattern repeats itself. You can look up Halbach array online. You will find a lot of diagrams how to build one and how the magnets have to be arranged. And yeah, the copper reflector itself is like this. I will show you later how you can make such a copper reflector. And now first off I will show you actually the field of the Halbach array. So I have here my magnetic viewing film and viewed from the strong side it looks like this and viewed from the weak side it looks like this. And if you view it from the side like this, hope you can see it where the magnet itself is and where the field is, you can see on the top the field extends much further than on the bottom. And this is what basically these Halberg arrays do. They focus the field on one side much stronger than on the other side. And therefore on this side the field is way stronger than here. And this is basically the effect that I use here. And yeah, a bit of background to the device itself. Um, I basically replicated this from Ken Wheeler's anti-gravity toy or device, but he actually didn't really release or open his device and show us what's inside, but he told us in some videos how he actually built it and from what I have understood, he has said he used two quadrupolar magnets like this. These are just four of these five millimeter cube magnets arranged. And yeah, if you stick both together, they stick like this. And the magnetic field or magnetic dielectric field viewed under the field viewer, as you can see, it looks kind of the same like the Halberg array. I will show you again, or at least the strong side of the Halberg array. They look kind of the same. And this is where I got my idea from to use a Halberg array. Because these quadruple magnets, if you view them from the other side, they look also the same. So if you view it from here, you will see the field extends um, on both sides the same way or the same distance. And the way Ken explained his device is that he used two quadrupolar magnets and a coil in between them. So I, I don't know if his device actually looks like this on the inside, but this is just what I understood from it. So he basically placed a coil in between these two quadrupolar magnets and then he used the watch battery, a CR2032, and yeah, connect obviously both ends 
of the coil to the battery and so this flat coil produces also a field and if you add a copper reflector on top it also creates the same effect. I've built several prototypes with this design and yeah they, they do work or for me they did work but yeah my my design wasn't actually that good so it's quite big and because of the battery and yeah a lot of components it got quite heavy and so the field effect is actually for me not that strong than with this much easier prototype that actually doesn't use a coil or a battery because the Halberg array itself focuses the field on one direction very strong and combined with the copper reflector you get exactly the same effect but because it's lighter itself from the weight yeah you can actually feel the effect much stronger so you get a really strong repelling force that you will feel and yeah bit of theoretical background if you can view this um, right at the center you will see I try to get closer you will see in the center there is a circle or a spot where there is no magnetism or no color that's the same color as the film itself and if I get closer the point in the middle gets smaller and if I go further away yeah it gets bigger so if you could imagine this um, three-dimensionally um, you could say there is like a, a vortex on, on this side and obviously of course on the other side and this would be like yeah, an hourglass shape viewed from here like from a small point in the center coming out like this and also on here but the field on this Halberg array as I showed you it is not symmetrical it is strong on one side or bigger and small on the other you can see this the, yeah, the spot in the middle as it grows so this in the middle, this is, would be the, the dielectric field, or a, I could say a dielectric vortex. And on the other side, it's kind of the same, but the field geometry of course looks a bit different. And this is also the same with these quadrupolar magnets. You can see, they also have this spot in the middle. This would be kind of the dielectric vortex and on the other side it obviously looks the same and yeah this is what I think is the actual repelling thing it's not the magnetism itself but yeah if you want to know better how this works watch Ken videos of this topic because I think he can explain it better than I can <laughs> so yeah I hope this is clear how this is made so now I will show you how you can actually build something like this so I will start off with the Halbeck array itself as I've explained before the orientation of the cube magnets is like this 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 and this you can look it up online how to properly arrange them it's quite easy and the, yeah, the plastic holder, the ring, this is just 3D printed to yeah, hold the magnets, magnets in place. If you have a 3D printer, you can print this quite easily yourself or there are also online service where you can yeah, let things print for you or if maybe you have a friend that can print it for you and these 5mm cube magnets should be the strongest possible you can get these are n52 grade but i've also made one with n45 grade they also work but of course the, the, the stronger the magnets the better or the stronger the effect and now for 
this copper reflector. You basically make this out of a sheet of copper, like I have here. This is a 0.5 millimeter thick sheet of copper. You can use a, yeah, a thicker sheet, doesn't matter. But yeah, with this 0.5 millimeter sheet, it's quite easy to bend. So if you use a thicker copper sheet, it will be harder to bend. And yeah, how you start off is you draw a circle on this sheet. Um, for this I used a 5.5 centimeter diameter circle, but yeah, this doesn't have to be precise. It also depends on the size of your Halbach array. I will show you again like this the proportions of the size of the copper reflector and the actual array. Uh, I didn't do any math for this. It's just what I thought would work well and yeah, this works well. So yeah, after you finished drawing a circle, you take some big scissors like this for cutting metal sheets and you cut out your circle. And yeah, after you have done this, you will end up with a copper circle or yeah, like this. And as you can see, I've already formed this one a bit, but I'm not really satisfied with the effect because what I found out is if it's parabolic like this, it works actually better. And as you can see, this is flat on here and flat on the outer side. So I will rework this one and yeah, I show you how I do it. So what you will need is a gas torch like this and also glass of water and important gloves so yeah you don't burn your fingers you don't want that so I will put them on and then you will light the torch and after that I take some pliers to hold it. Make sure you hold it tight and it doesn't escape you because this will get very hot. And yeah, then you heat it up like this. And yeah, the temperature is very important because you will see how it heats up and changes color now it's already bluish but you want it still a bit hotter you want it to glow red so if it glows red you have the ideal temperature but be careful that you don't make it too hot on one spot because this thin copper will uh, melt quite easily as you can see it's already glowing red and yeah I do this a couple of seconds copper will heat up quite fast Maybe also on the other side a bit. Like this. And then you put it in water for a few seconds and now it's cooled off. Copper does cool off very fast in water. It's cooled down within two or three seconds. Then you wipe the excess water a bit off. And now you have annealed your copper sheet because with copper um, if you deform it it will get harder and this is exactly when it the, the copper sheet is produced it's rolled out and then it's very hard to bend but if you heat it up until it's glowing red hot this process is also called annealing then the copper will get very soft again and a thin copper sheet like this and when it's annealed it's really easy to bend so I can bend it with my fingers quite easily and now I will start to bend it like I want the shape of it take your time when doing this at first it will not be perfect but you yeah it's so easy to bend and work 
you can take your time, bend it like you need it, and don't worry if it's not perfect at first, it also doesn't need to be extremely precise or perfect, just bend and bend and some, yeah, after some time you will end up with a good shape. You can also use, if you have more tools, you can use tools or forms to bend it, and of course if you bend it a lot, it will get harder again. So, if you feel like yeah, it's really tight to bend and you almost can't really bend it anymore, you will, yeah, you have just heated up again and then it will be easy to bend. And, yeah, as you can see, I've just bent it like this a bit and we also already got a quite nice parabolic shape. I will have to bend it longer and more precise to, to, get it, to get it to a form like this, but yeah, after you have done this, you have a nice parabolic copper reflector and then you just put your Halberg array right in the center, the strong side facing out like this, so yeah, logically. And put some tape over it to hold it in place and then you got your own anti-gravity toy that actually works and I will give you some tips on how to use it properly and um, the best way I will take this one the best way is if you hold it in a slight angle like this and when you drop it down you will you have to adjust the angle to get it yep like this so i will show you the movement it's like this and then you will feel the effect the repulsion effect really strong and yeah this works everywhere don't need some metal underneath to make this work and it's really cool to show somebody this because yeah i guess most people haven't felt or seen something like this before and yeah that's basically it and how to make it um, if i forgot something to show let me know or if you have questions you can also ask and thanks for watching and goodbye